million dollars worth of game. We love all our supporters out there for rocking with us for so many years. We got everything going on wherever you like. Gilly on Sports, Where's Wallow, Adventures, whatever it is. What you need to do right now, I need you to push the subscribe button, but also share, like, go down below, get some merch. Share, like, get some merch, subscribe. We got more to come. Subscribe right now. Million dollars worth of game. Ah. You're now tuned into me, 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 Million dollars worth of game. We got the one, the only, the internationally known, locally accepted, Pretty V. What going on? What's going on, V? What's good? Talk to us. You over there, listen, you look, you over there look like a million dollars. It's like what? Cash money. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> she out here doing it. V, you out here doing it. What's been going on, V? You know, working is working. You know, God first. It's a new season. It's, you know, 2024. So we just stepping in and, you know, stepping out. So that's what I'm going to do. You've been putting that work in the last couple of years, just going in hard. Uh, what motivates you, V? Mm, um, just where I came from. You know, I'm from Miami, you know, um, moved from Miami to the Carolinas and went to school in North Carolina, um, did all four years at St. Aug and um, I just watched my mom, you know, have, but I also watched her struggle too. So for me, it's just like, I know I'm the last child on her side and I'm like, God gave me this responsibility. So what motivates me, keeps me going is like where I came from and just know I just can't go back there. You know, it's just too many examples that I don't want to follow. And is there examples that I do? And that's my mom, you know, I'm a PK. So my mom's a pastor. So one thing about it, she has led me, you know, to the woman I am today, just continue to keep going. And I think that's what motivates me, her and just my past. Like I, I, I got to keep going. You're so creative. And, and Your mom a pastor? Yep. He's she ever seen your skits and called you up and said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and there be some skits that I don't even want to post sometimes. You know how many skits I don't archive? Because she like, if it ain't for the Lord, don't call me and ask if it's okay. So I'll be like, I'm just going to post it anyway. And then I'll be feeling bad because I'm like, all right, let me just. It's a balance. But that's part of your job. Mm -hmm. I know. I know it is. It is. But sometimes too, I... I feel like Instagram is a definitely a tool and a part of my resume, my resume, but I don't always have to put it all on IG. You know, some things I could be creative with, and I just I just throw what I want people to see. I don't have to do everything. I I save that for my shows. You know, I save that for the screens that I want to be on. I didn't, I've been doing this since 2016, so it's like sometimes we have to just give whatever we want to give the people. You know, you funny. You know, you don't gotta just always. Give the IG everything. I'm, I'm learning that. Sometimes it's good to keep things for yourself. And when it's time to get in front of that screen on your own production or in front of different companies, you'll know you have some things that the world didn't see yet. And that's me. So how do you yeah. um, how do you stay creative? Because it's like it's always a battle because every day somebody think they could just grab their phone and be pretty V. Yeah. And you're seeing so much, you know, when you when you sit back and watch social media, so much is coming at you because everybody think being funny is yeah. just putting a real quip up and they're going to blow up and be. Yeah. So how do you balance the saying, you know what, let me stay in my lane. Let me keep staying focused, be creative in my own without looking at things because you see a lot of mimicking going on on social. For sure. People be stealing like crazy. So yeah. You know, yeah. Everybody's giving out free game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I've always uh, been a person to do me and have fun. I remember my one of my mentors was like, you know, just have fun. Don't take the fun out of what you do. So I think I just stay in my lane. I don't look to the left. I don't look to the right. I look to what I'm doing. I post my content. I'm hood one day. I'm going to give you New York one day. I'm going to give you body gal Jamaican one day. I'm going to give you this gal. I'm going to give you everything because of what I've seen growing up and what I want people to see. So I don't look at what everybody else is do. I just stay in my lane. Every day there's, and my mind is so powerful. So every day I'm coming up with something that nobody hasn't seen. If you guys seen it yet, it's probably a different pair of shoes. I'm probably on the table. I'm probably in the street somewhere, but it's not going to be the same exact skit because every day my mind is running and I don't look at nobody. I just stay motivated on my own thing and inspired by the greats, which is Jim Carrey, which is my favorite, um, you know, actor and comedian and entertainer. When, when is that you know? a real Jamaican Hold accent? Up. Yeah, my parents are Jamaican. But when did you know? Bad girl! Me no 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 down, screw on fear. <laughs> when, did, when did you know? Huh? When did you know you was funny? In like elementary school, like middle school, you know, I used to always be getting yelled at by my teachers, like, Vina, like, come to the this. And my real name is Devana, so Devana, come to the thing, come to the back, come to the... So I knew it was something. And my mom already told me before I went into high school, she said, God said you're going to be in the arts. I didn't know what she meant by that. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so uh, 
I, um, my mom told me before, like middle school and all that stuff. She was like, you know, God said you're gonna be in the arts. I didn't know what she was talking, what she was talking about. I thought it was gonna be a writer, a painter, or something, whatever. Until I found that when I fought myself in the street back in 2016, and I was like, well, this is what she meant. This is what was prophesied over my life. Okay, now I gotta stay at it. And that's when all the characters came about. The mind is so powerful because people don't understand you. You have to. That's where the enemy fights you at in your mind. So that's why you have to stay on one accord. You know, you have to stay creative. And I think when I come up with all those skits and all those characters, it's really from what I've seen, but what's internal. So it's like, oh, I could be this. I know how to do this. I know how to show myself I could do this single mom and be Sharon. So I just use all of those stuff, you know, what I've seen growing up and I ran with it. So from there, from middle school, I'm like, I know I'm going to be, it's going to be crazy once I get the time. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, a lot of people see social media comedians, right? Mm-hmm. And they don't understand you got to go through a lot to build up your, the characters, to build up your rep, to get paid. When was it that you start getting paid and you was like, oh, this shit is real. I really can make some money. Mm. For, I'm going to be very honest with you. I didn't, I didn't know Instagram was, Instagram, the app was paying I ain't talking about Instagram money. I'm talking about just yeah. I'm, well, I'm just gonna yeah. I'm gonna get there. So I didn't know that Instagram was paying um, uh, creatives until like maybe two years ago. Like I was like, y'all been getting to check out this thing. I just been doing me with brands and deals, yeah. you know. Um, but when I first got my first brand ambassador with Dare to Have Hair, it's a hair company. I was like, oh shoot, they see these characters. They want Sharon and Bobo to have a wig on mm-hmm. that that represents their brand. Like they want me to wear their hair in my skits. Oh. I could make money off of this. Mind you know, I was working for the baby. I was working for Honor Taylor. I was the baby's assistant. So I, in 2016 in um, Charlotte, so I had, I wasn't making no money for real. You know, I was getting, I don't know what Arnold was paying me, but it wasn't much. So I was still short $1,000. So when I got viral, I was working a nine to five, then working on my craft. So when I was getting viral, I was still working. And that's when Dear Have Hair was like, hey, I want you to be a brand ambassador. And that's when I was like, oh shoot, I'm making my little $500. This, this this could add up to this, this could add up to that, until um, I auditioned for Wild and Out. I mean, I didn't make it but at that time, but I knew around that time that if brands are reaching out, well, I can make some money off of me being myself. So and that was then and then, of course, now. And then it started turning it up. And then it started turning it up, yeah. I got on Wild and Out, I lied to get on the show. I said, DC Young, fly my cousin, call us little my uncle. I need to get on the show. And then the diamonds came. Then the diamonds came. No, it didn't come right away. No, it didn't. I, I was still trying to figure it out. It did not. I was. I ain't make it. I was living in Charlotte with my sister. You know, we was we was trying to figure it all out. I ain't, Nick said I wasn't. Fun. They Nick said out. Nick said I was funny, but who was? You know, the people that had to perform. Yeah, all that was like, no, she's not funny. Next. So Why you ain't stop? It. Huh? Why you ain't stop? Oh no, I had a I had a mission. There's a process before the promise, so I had to go ahead and do it. Like I couldn't give up. How on did that it make you feel when it was like you ain't hot? Oh, that just put fire under my belt. Let me ask you a question. Are the same people still working for Wild and Out? For sure. So, how do they feel now? Oh, I mean, <laughs> look, right. <laughs> how you feel now? Somebody was wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> now I was like, no, ma'am. She ain't hot. Of her. You, you know. was wrong, buddy. It's cool. Play us fuck up too now. Right, right, you right, right, I mean? right, right. You Play know. us fuck up. But I, I think to now wanted me to show up, you know, uh, how to transition from Instagram to the screen, you know, what does that look like for her? And I understood that. That's why I went to go do my homework. And that's when I had to go, you know, let me get get more creative so they could see that I am funny. So now me and Nala like this, me and Nick been like this, because Nick was like, no, I, from the get go, you were funny to me, you know, but I had to work in 2018. And that's when I, you know, um, it's my ninth season. So I've been on the show since then. Damn, you've been on it for the nine seasons? Nine seasons. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Beautiful. Nine that's seasons. Work. And that's when I was, no, I was like, I could use <coughs> my comedy to make some money. And that's what I was able to just continue to keep growing from there. It wasn't easy because from the baby, I was I went to work at Fair for Marriott, still working on my craft. Now, when you say the baby, you talk about the baby, the rapper? Yeah, the baby, the baby, John, John, yeah. Oh, okay. I never yeah, I was, knew you I was. was, I, was his, no. I was their assistant. Yeah, you knew that? No. Yeah, no, I was I their never. admin, yeah. I, I was booking like... I was doing stuff for Arnold Taylor, doing his uh, programs with the music and all that radio plays. And then after that, he's like, I have someone called Baby Jesus, and um, we're trying to get him off the ground. And I had a following, and I brought him 
to some of the HBCUs and um, he was doing some interview plays and blink of an eye, he's, let's go. Yeah, the baby. He, the, the transition and I got fired. So I got Arnold fired. What you fired, fired for? Damn, you got fired? Yeah, I got fired for all my jobs. I knew I wasn't supposed to work with nobody. Damn. I, I'm a, I, I, I what got, they fired you, you were showing up late? I wasn't showing up late. I, Arnold said that I was not uh, completely there. Like you know, okay. he, you my focus, shit going on. my fur, my focus. Excuse me, my focus was to be a comedian. Yeah. Like I was like, "Huh? You said to do what for who?" And I'm gonna be like, "Huh?" Like, uh, yeah. 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 like I'm doing yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm like, I ain't focused on no damn right. doing stuff for y'all for yeah. real. But I still wanted to be there because that was a safe place. Yeah, I knew I could make some money just yeah. a little bit. So I'm like, I still needed that job. Mm -hmm. Now, faith had to kick in, and when I got fired. I spoke to the baby and he was like, man, you funny, bro. Go focus on that. So I always kept that. And when we seen each other at the Hip Hop Awards and I think it was like 28, 2019, we was like, oh my God, oh my God. And so, yeah. 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 Until I seen Cat Williams the other day, I didn't understand how serious it is about comedians stealing other comedians' jokes. For sure. And how... He take that shit serious. Has anybody ever stole a joke of yours? Or you looked up and you was like, whoa, hold the fuck up. Like, Oh, my God. That person's blocked to today. But it has happened. It has happened. And it has happened still to this day. I see my facial expressions on people. I see some of the skits. Can't nobody do the motherfucking lip. Mm-mm. Damn. Mm -mm. Nobody can't do the lip. Sorry. Mm. They see this, they know exactly who it come from. Right, yeah, no. The the <laughs> the down to the dressing, the characters, I mean, th but th this is there's no I haven't seen no pretty V on social media. I don't know who only person that's pretty V is for sure is only one, it's me. That you can't it can't I can't be duplicated. I can't there's no no there's only one. There's no two. So right. for me, uh people have definitely uh, stole some content from mine, but you know, some of them folks is blocked, so it is what it is. Don't keep it moving. I don't even block them. I just, I just, cause my shit gets stolen so much, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. I hear motherfuckers say all my sayings, <laughs> and it's like nobody wasn't saying that before. No, no for sure. So, but Cat was right. I love Cat. I spoke to Cat, and um, what one advice that Cat gave me was uh to um to uh, stay in the way. Um, he said that you are. Very, very funny, very, very talented. And um, I was supposed to go on a road with Cat 2, I think two years ago or a year. I went up by my house. I don't even know. I think it's like 2020, 21. And um, I guess COVID came and all that good stuff, but I was supposed to open up on his tour. Um, and it was going to be dope. But I mean, hopefully the opportunity comes back again because I, I, love, I love Cat. I think Cat is so, so dope. He's, he's, he's awesome to the culture and he is that. And he gave me the advice I always run with is stay in the way. Don't come out of that. Stay in your way, and I and I I've been staying in the way, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's beautiful. What's the difference between Instagram funny and stand up funny? Um, stand up funny is pressure. You know, we're not getting booed from a phone. Like, and if it is, they're scrolling up. That's the difference. Like for me, um, I've done stand up. I've tried it. I've I've host stand up shows. I've done stand up. Um, I'm a little bit more different than a lot of of my peers, but for me, um. For is it's, it's about the audience and it's about that pressure and it's like it's a fearful thing. It's easy to do this, you know. Like, oh, but that's it. And then when you got to get on that stage, you don't know how to transition that. Mm -hmm. The jokes are not hitting, so you're up on a crowd. You're in front of a crowd. You're trying to perform in front of them. You're trying to give them your life story. You're trying to do a joke and see if it hit or not. This is easy. Mm -hmm. Who gives a damn if it hits? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a million views. You go on the damn. You go to the funny club, whatever the funny shit. And Comedy factor. Yeah, all of that. And you're in front of Tim. You're in front of someone that doesn't know you. You're in front of this lady that's 50 years old that's not a fan, but she came because her little, aunt, her little cousin is a fan of yours, and you got to make her laugh too. So it's a lot of pressure to be a, a stand-up comedian. I'm happy that I, I tried it, and I'm happy that I did it. And I could say I've done it, but I, my lane is one-woman shows. My lane is... My variety show. My lane is going on stage and turning that that bitch up, you know, into different characters. Sixty minutes, I'm on stage, changing mm. out. You know, I that's for me. That's pressure too because you have to make the crowd laugh. You know, they came out to see you and just you. There's nobody 
running around with hecklers. No, I'm can't nobody hold you down. No, nobody can't do that. So that's my lane of business, and uh, yeah. You ever mm-hmm. been booed? Um, I've told some. Someone told me I've never been booed, but someone um has told me that they didn't think I was funny when they came to the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you well, just. I was on things. tour with that person. They told me that. Um, I was. How funny. did you feel about that? Wait, was you was a on tour? I was in tour with this comic, and they told me I wasn't funny. Well, you want to leave them nameless? <laughs> yeah, we gonna need. Okay. Them. But, but 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 they told. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You went with a whole tour. How many shows did y'all do before he t- the person told you this? Uh, I don't know. It was like a four or five day like city tour. And they just told you that was that hate? It was. I think it was. I think it was more of like you have to understand that person was already doing comedy. Um, so when you have someone that's a social media social media light that just comes in automatically and just be like, well, how can they just do host? How can they just come host a comedy show? How can they have a 20, 30 minute set or okay. 15 minute set? Okay. Yeah, that it's was too hate. easy for them. That oh, no, hate. it's not funny. No, but you know what, too? I'm going to keep it all the way real. The com- I get it. I know what you're going to say. The older comedians, yeah, the they loosened up after the years went by. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. when first when the comedians started popping on in social media, they were shitting on all of them. Yeah. Man, they social media comedians. That shit don't work in the stand-up world. Yeah. That shit whack. They, uh, that shit here today, going tomorrow. We yeah. put real work in. For we sure. Ain't, we had to go to, well, nigga, you're 50, nigga. Mm-hmm. They're 20. Mm-hmm. Of course, they had to go through the shit you went to. The niggas that that's, that rap now don't have to go through the shit I went through. I had to wait outside for niggas to come outside a concert, run up on a nigga. <laughs> you can't rap for you. I had to rap for the niggas <laughs> that, that he had to like me. Now a nigga can blow from his living room. How you? How you? <laughs> fucking Chief Keith blew up. He made every video out of it on fucking over uh, condo. Every video was him and 30 niggas in a condo with guns. No, apartment. So, apartment. So at the end of the day, it was like the comedians was not trying to hear that social media yeah. comedian shit. They was hating them and yeah. fuck them. They don't put no yeah. work in. I've been now in for 44 years doing this thing. Now they get to the point where they have to embrace y'all because y'all been kicking on the door long enough to the point where they was like, okay, you know what? Let's open this motherfucker. Yeah. And we respect it. You know, at the end of the day, I love all the comedians, the females down to the males. Like I'm obsessed with you know Melissa McCarthy, I'm obsessed with Marlon Wayans. I'm obsessed with Kevin Hart. I'm obsessed with Mike Epps. I'm obsessed with Eddie Murphy. I'm obsessed with Lunell. Like I, some more, like I love them all. You know Monique. So I mean Tiffany Haddish. Like I love her. So it's like, and we have our conversations as well. So I mean, I don't. I never. I don't. Yeah. You and Tiff. I love Tiff. You said y'all had your conversations as well. Yeah, we have. She our, sounds. She seemed like a down to earth. Oh person. my god, I love. I'm Tiff. Like she gave me the best advice too. You know, just keep going you? and just, you know, you're a star. And I told her one day we gonna work, and I know it's gonna come. Yeah. Tiff. Tiffany, I'm waiting. Come sis. get a little sis, mm. Tiff. Yeah, you know. Walk you waiting on. Yeah, I love. I <laughs> yeah, love y'all it. gonna get it in. We yeah. like to speak shit into existence. Yeah, for sure. On this show. When when, when you doing your own movie? And I just mentioned that when I said I'm in my, uh, a whole different bracket and lane um, from everybody else. You know, I'm just here just being a creative director and, you know, producing and directing my own stuff. I have three um, sketch shows out called V's House where I play everybody. Y'all know Sharon, Bobo, all of mm-hmm. that. So right now we want that to be, you know, on the big screen. So that's what we focus on this year. And I told myself I've always pulled up for my friends when I'm in town or when I, I have time to do it. Now, you know, it's time for... People to come out and see me too. So that's pull up on you. Pull up on me. It's yeah. time. I think people want to see Sharon and on the big the big screen. I think it's time people want to see Sharon on a stage. So we working towards that. Twenty twenty four. When your next tour? Um, we work. We had a meeting about that today. Um, me and my agents. We were talking about that, and um, we were like, "Look, I <coughs> need to set up something with what I what we working with. So let's do it. You know, wilding out. You know, has always been a tour for all of us." Nick, shout out to Nick. I love Nick. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Nick. Um, <laughs> I love him so much. And um, he has made ways for a lot of uh, comedians like myself. I always call myself an all-purpose entertainer. So shout out to Charlamagne for giving me that name. But, you know, I, uh, he's he's opened up that door for us to uh, to get a coin off going on tour and, and all that good stuff. So we don't know when that's happening. And Nick don't get the flowers that he needs. So I'm here to tell him that I love him down. Shout and, out to Nick. Yeah. Nick has definitely opened up the 
that that way for us to come and grab, you know, and he don't want nothing in return, but just go be great. You know? So um That's yeah, major. Yeah. Now uh you and Desi. <laughs> y'all two is magical. Love him. Y'all gave us shout out to Desi, man. Real one. Real Desi one. Desi Banks, man. man. He's a real one, his whole team, and my fucking boys. Yeah. Um y'all magical. When y'all two get together, y'all just remind us of a a a a, a, a stink stink. No, nah, they remind us of uh, Tyrese and Taraji and motherfucking baby boy. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. So he's so stupid. <laughs> Crazy, y'all was snap. I love him. I love Desi. Desi is uh, um, everything. I told him I'm going to say his name on the podcast because he didn't say my name on the podcast when he was on you. Yeah, he didn't even but got yeah. all about you. Mm-hmm. But um, Desi's amazing. Um, I love him so much. He's one of my best friends and. I was just talking to him on the way here um, and just letting him know I'm going to be here with you guys. And he just gave me some advice on just things that I was, you know, dealing with and, and vice versa. So I love him. He's he's a star. And tomorrow we're about to get up together and do another skit. So I can't wait to see what the hell How y'all hooked up? Mm, social media. You know, be Simone as well. Be Simone shout was, out to B. Yeah, shout out to be Simone. She was doing skits with him first. And that's when I came on in and, and we all did some stuff together. And, of course, B did her own thing and we did our thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. How is it being a woman in the industry, a, black, a woman of color in the industry? Is it difficult sometimes? Yes, it is. What's and, it, what is it? And on top of two, when you're pretty too, you know, it's people don't take you serious for real. Yeah, but you're funny. Everybody can see you funny. I mean, yeah, but some people don't take you serious. They just, I know. I mean, I'm. I look dirty on my page. Some mm-hmm. days it's clean. Some days being dressed up. The next day you're gonna see her looking like. Somebody from Don't Be a Menace, the the funny version. You mm-hmm. know, like it's it's that. Like I'm I'm that that's why I love the Wayne so much, because I'm that person. Like you're gonna get cute, you're gonna get dirty, you're gonna get ghetto, you're gonna get don't care, like all of that. So sometimes I'm feel like I'm showing showing my ranges and some people may not think I'm showing my ranges. They may just think like, okay, like I wanna see something else. I want her to be this way, I want her to be that way. So sometimes the industry don't understand like this is what it is. You know, DC Young Fly got that far because of him being him. Cardi B got that far from her being her. So right. why can't I be me? You know, so sometimes it's a little hard. You know, um, sometimes you just got to do business with people, you know, and keep, I'm that girl. Like anybody in the industry could just tell you, like, my face is clean. My heart is good. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't play with all that. Let's talk about the business. Let's do what we got to do. I'm funny. What's the what's the self tape? Let's go do it. Please check up on people. Let me, you know, I'm, I'm that person. So it's a little hard because sometimes for me, you're coming from social media. So they sometimes don't take those, you know, influencers a little serious. Mm-hmm. But that's why I don't, I'm, I don't say I'm influencer anymore. I influence. I am an all-purpose entertainer. I am a comedian. I'm all-purpose entertainer. I do it all. You know, I dance. You know, I rap. <laughs> I do. What are your um, mixtape coming out? I, I got like four or five songs on iTunes. You know, and you know, <laughs> you know. Um, I wonder if she rapping with her lip like them. Hello, period. Yeah. So I do so much different things. You know, I entertain. You know, I host. I, uh, you know, I'm a creative director. I do so much in my space, and you guys will take me serious one day when it comes down to putting me with the, the, the. I'm gonna say Melissa McCarthy. Speak with, on it. With the, um, he's not here, but I wish he was. Robin Williams. Speak you know, on it. I'm, I'm with the Oprahs. You know, speak to the Red Foxes. You know, all of those. Speak people, on it. You know, the uh, Eddie with Murphys. The, with the Zendayas. You know, like I'm, I'm with I'm, the Moniques. With the Moniques. Speak on it. You know, I'm, I'm that girl. So it's just like, it's okay if you guys don't. And I love it. I love when they don't take us serious. I love when they be like. What is she? I love that. I love when they don't know who I am because that means I still have work to do. Yeah. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, life isn't going your way. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka. You caught your wife cheating today. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka. The Philadelphia Eagles just lost today. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka is still five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. Now you can drink it straight up. You can drink it on the rocks, juice, soda. Or you could just make a classic New Amsterdam mule. That's up to you. But when you're out and about at your local liquor store, don't you dare pass that New Amsterdam Vodka. You scoop it up. 
You take it to that register. Boop, boop, boop. That was you getting three bottles because you, you don't want to keep having to go back. You just might as well stock up right now so you can be happy. And you make sure you get you some of that New Amsterdam vodka. That's the official vodka bar stool. And shout out to the New Amsterdam queen. Be whipping it up at the crib with the girlfriends, making the cocktails, doing their thing. New Amsterdam vodka. Get you some. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. How do you, how do you wear your confidence so well when we live in a time when especially women mm-hmm. give a fuck about so much, they care so much about mm-hmm. what other people think? Yeah. How do you wear your confidence so well? Because it takes a lot of confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to go out there and be in my panties. I'm going to look dirty yeah. for this skit. Yeah, yeah. That, take, yeah. that really take confidence yeah. in yourself. A lot of motherfuckers would come up with that idea and they would talk themselves out of that idea. Yeah. they like, I don't want to be looking like that. Then I'm, they weren't about a motherfucker calling them a dirty this and they, they weren't about confidence. Where did your confidence come from where you like, I just do me. I don't worry about what people think. Um, I... S- one word, God, for me. Um, God made me this way, you know. Um, I also know there's a balance. Like I told you at the beginning, I don't try to put so I, my content's on IG. I'm going to give y'all whatever I have. But when some things I want to keep sacred, I keep to myself because I know that there's a purpose for why I kept it. Why? Because it's, I want to put it in front of these people to let them know, like, these are the characters I came up with, and it's not on Instagram. How I wear it is I come from a, a mother, which is Yorilana Champagne. She... Wears her confidence. But that's your mama team. name. Yeah. Damn, that, that sounds expensive. Miss yeah. Champagne. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, but it's past the G. It's past the G. Like it's past the G. Um, but I wear it so well because I know who I am, and nobody can knock me down. You know, the stress of the world causes anxiety. I was talking to my homegirl today about the word anxiety. How a lot of people that has that's my peers, we all figure out. We all trying to figure out what's next, and we get so. Oh my God. Like, you know, uh, th- like, mm-mm. I wear my armor of God on me every day. Mm. Like, when I leave, he there. When I go to sleep, he there. When I walk in, I'm talking to y'all, he's there. I'm, I'm, I'm that girl. Like, I don't have time to be looking at everybody else. Like, I want that. No, I have that. Whatever you have, I already got. Ten times more because I know I wear mine. I don't put on. Like, if you see me, if I like somebody, I'm by somebody I like, what they do? That's me. Right. Like, Get it, what's going on? Right. How you feel it? Right. Mm-hmm. That's all of that. Like, right. I'm going to have, because I wear that. You that's know? funny. That's how I am. Yeah. Like, what you see is what, what you, you get. get. It ain't no, okay. it's not like. Yeah. I don't need There's no mystery to, to this yeah. shit. It's either to... you fuck with me or you don't. Now, I'm observing. I'm going to observe the room. I'm going to, before I, you know, start doing what I do to see what that energy feels like. But other than that, I wear the arm of God around me every day. Nobody can take that from me. It's in my blood, and I'm going to rock out either way. So if you don't like me, it is what it is. That's just your internal, not mine, because I'm going to just say what they do to everybody in here if they don't know me or not. Mm. Welcome to another million dollars worth of game business spotlight today. We have my man JD on here talking about that Wait, employee you exit. Yeah, well, you know, he's trying to steal his name, but it's oh, cool. Okay. JD, right. yeah, I'm JD. I you know, know he be mean? dancing and shit. Yeah, they, the Hello? JD, the dancer. But listen, <laughs> coming live from New York. But the whole thing is like, one thing about today, JD, he coming on here to talk about employee exit plan membership program that he got dealing with the Airbnb money hat course, the Airbnb script, furnishing must have list. And Metro 2 ebook. He's to breaking everything down to you. He's in a uh, Airbnb game. He's just going to give you the game of how he's going to do his thing. But tell us, how did you get started? First of all, when you was broke, when things wasn't going on right, or uh, whatever was going on, how did you get into this game? How did you learn the game? And how did you execute the game? Yeah, so I got in this game actually um, in 2020. Uh, I was a part of a company. A company went out of business. And I had no experience as an entrepreneur outside of, you know, I did network marketing in the past. So I reached out to one of my friends who was successful. He told me, he was telling me about a bunch of businesses, but he told me about Airbnb. And he said two things about Airbnb that caught my attention. He said, with Airbnb, you can start with low cost and get into profit immediately. And he said, you also don't have to own the property to list and make money on Airbnb. So being that I was in, you know, I was, I was a little messed up when it came up financially. So I said, you know what, this will be a good thing for me to get a part of because I didn't have to have a lot of money to start and I didn't have to own anything. So, so you didn't own nothing, you... Cause you know, people hearing that, hold up, I ain't own nothing. I ain't, how do I start? How do I get Airbnb if I don't own nothing? Or I ain't got nothing. Like, how do you do that? Yeah, so it's called rental arbitrage. It's, it's really simple. All you do is you contact the building, you give them a professional script, and they allow you to rent an apartment and put it on platforms like Airbnb. When you say professional script, break that down. So professional script, it could be as simple as this: you call them up, and say, "Hey, my name is Jay Dinkins. I have a company called 
luxury stays. And basically what we do is we provide housing to people who travel for business. Do you have any apartments available for those purposes? It's super simple. And they'll be like, yeah. And they'll be like, yes. Or they'll be like, no. How many times do you get yes over no? Uh, you'll get a yes. If you do it the way that I teach, because I, I try to make things super simple. So instead of me ca calling 40 buildings and getting a no, what I do is I go on Airbnb and I find buildings where people already have a bunch of Airbnbs in it. Therefore, I'm more likely to get a yes because they already didn't allow it. Okay. So when I call, I could call 10 different properties and get yes nine times because I already see people doing Airbnb in the building. Okay. But right. if you call, if you do it the opposite way and you just call in any building, you're going to get 35 no's out of 40. Okay. So if, if you ask them, can I do put the Airbnb? Can I utilize one of your rooms? Do how do they? How do you break down the fee? Do you pay for a mom, uh, a monthly fee, a weekly fee? How do you do it? Nah. So you're just paying rent. The thing is, these buildings they want to get new occupants in there. They don't want to have their their apartments vacant. So all you're gonna do is pay rent. So most times when I move in, I pay the first month rent. I pay like an application fee, an admin fee, and that's it. And all I do is just furnish the unit, put it up on Airbnb, and I start making money. And how many units you got right now? 12. Damn. And all these- All one bedrooms and none in the city that I live in. But why do you say that? Because I live in, you got to know your, you know, I live, I'm from New York, right? And I live in Stanford, Connecticut, but people ain't traveling there. So you want to okay. have it in places where, you know, people are going to travel. So I have it in different places where people are going to travel is going to allow me to make money. But the great thing is I don't have to be there to make the money. So so what cities you got in there? Uh, my, my favorite spot, we got Nashville. Why is Nashville? Nashville, it's the it's the capital of country music. Okay. It's honky tonk town. They call it the white people's Vegas, right? So people are always going there. Bachelorette parties. So there, I can charge five ninety nine a night for one bedroom. Damn. Versus, I got one in Atlanta. I'm charging sixty seventy dollars a night. Mm. So I like to go where the money's at. So why you ain't just give? Why you ain't just say you know what? Just join Atlanta. Let's kill this. And let's I mean, hello. That's what I just did. I just started cutting off a few of the ones in Atlanta. And I'm getting more Nashville. And the thing I love about Nashville, my Nashville units are Airbnb friendly buildings. Basically, these are buildings where Airbnb already approved it. So I don't have to come with no clever script. I don't have to worry if they're going to say yes or no. I don't have to have an LLC. I don't have to have anything. All I got to do is know where the building is, apply for an apartment, and I can get in super easy, but I can make a lot of money. Mm. Damn, Nashville. Ain't nobody. And we, mm -hmm. we went to Nashville one time. Mm -hmm. yeah, go, Nashville. Go, go, go to Nashville. Go down by Broadway. That's where they travel. That's where they want to go. And they're paying five ninety. You tell me, Broadway's that's where all the the honky tonk bars are. We was walking down and we went mm -hmm. in the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they have all the live music. Yep. Right. See, people want to go where 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 they know it to be popular. I'm not here to go and and provide something for that's popular for the people that that I hang around. I want to go where I'm going to be able to make some money, and it's not going to take me a lot of time and effort to do it. Now, so so is give it, them that number. Is, is, first of all, you what you need to do right now, you need to text. MDWG to 917 813 0072. 917 813 0072. Right here, he's going to give you the game. I'm talking about Airbnb money what you hacks. you giving away for free. Uh, so I'm giving away a few things. One is an is a Airbnb money hacks course, and I mm -hmm. want to do that because, you know, you could start a business, but I don't mean you're going to make money in that business. So you want to start an Airbnb business, but you want to know how to make money. And the great thing is, within that, I also teach how to actually get into this Airbnb game, make money without actually having to have a unit. Because everybody teach Airbnb, but now you guess what? You gotta actually have a unit. But there's ways to make money on Airbnb without even ever having a unit. And it's super easy, don't cost any money, don't require any credit, mm. right? So you're gonna get the course, you're gonna get a script so you know what to say when you contact the building, you're gonna get a list so you know what you need to order for your units. Mm. And then I also threw in a Metro 2 credit ebook because for some people they want to start a business like airbnb but they need to get their credit right so i want to make sure you got no excuses as to why you can't start your journey mm. that's major and you're giving all that away yeah when you text mdwg to 917-813-0072 now when you say this list this furniture like furniture must have list you got to have a certain things to, to have an airbnb yeah absolutely so there's certain things that you want to do with your airbnb when it comes to furniture to make sure that you're making a lot of money. Like one thing that I do that a lot of people don't talk about is I put a lot of beds. I say the more people you sleep, the more money you make. So I'm the person, when you come to my Airbnb, there's beds in the living room. See, I'm not going to furnish it like my house. My house, I ain't going to have a bed in the living room. But there, I'm there to make money. So if I can have two queen beds in the, in the living room, another queen bed in the bedroom, right? That's two people on each bed. That's a one bedroom sleep six. 
I throw another pullout inside of the uh, hold on, hold closet. On. Mm-hmm. I'm I competing th- with the two bedrooms now. But I got one bedroom. I would think, hold up. You people ain't got no problem sleeping like that? Nope. No. Not if you know the environment. Not not in Nashville, Tennessee. No, because you got to understand. They coming to party. Well, well, party well, well, let's be for real. Play music. No, mm-hmm. let's be for real. Even black people ain't got a problem with that shit. Mm-hmm. These chicks fly six deep down to the motherfucking Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They be down there glazing biscuits and all cramped up in a motherfucking Holiday Inn motherfucking room for sixty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. They take them eight hours to get dressed because all of them got to use the bathroom, mm-hmm. put their makeup mm-hmm. on and all the so shit. Honky Tonk Town, they they brewskied up. They don't, they sleeping on top of each other. Ah, they don't fall asleep like this. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> Ten o'clock in the morning, they out there with the cowboy boots. The right. They're not in the room. They're not there. They did a party. So I understand that. That's why you got to understand your market. If I understand that, why am I sitting here putting the couch? They okay. don't ever sit in there. They just want to go party, get hammered, come back, and sleep. Not drunk. They want to get hammered. Mm. Damn, this is a difference, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm, he used to get hammered a little Absolutely. bit. You could tell. He's a hammer warrior. Oh, you was a brewski warrior. Yeah. Brewski. Damn. <laughs> he ain't seen a I mean, he ain't never seen a Miller I mean, Lite he ain't like. Well, what's the most six packs you took down in a day? <laughs> no, I ain't answering that. No comment. Oh, <laughs> damn. You think they're like five. But just know if he could bounce back from 12 brewskis a day, you can too. Damn. Airbnb right now. <laughs> Give him the number. That's crazy, man. I just I I they, 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 I never knew that. You're right. People going down there, either they musicians. Mm-hmm. They go do a studio session, so they just in there grooving out, or they going out there to get. And then you understand too, <laughs> most people don't be having a, a lot of money, so it's like okay, I travel with three people, we split a room. Oh, so mm-hmm. if it's six hundred a night, oh, we all put two hundred. Hold on, maybe we staying for three nights, so I put six hundred for three nights. Then they looking at it like this: we got a stove, we could cook, we could buy our food, we got a refrigerator, we could put our food in the refrigerator. To, so we ain't got to spend a bunch of money when we go out and about. We could do it all right here. Get a bunch of brewskis. Right. Yeah, so it's like, the way they're going to look at it is this. I can go and rent this two-bedroom that sleep <laughs> four people, but I'm going to spend $800 a night. Or I can take this one-bedroom that sleeps six, seven, divide it over my six or seven people, and I'm going to pay less, but I can sleep with all my people. They're going to do that every single time. This is why my units stay booked. Damn, I never knew that. Because mm-hmm. you're the first person I ever heard say putting beds in a... Uh, Mm-hmm. Living room. Every one of them. You know what I just noticed? He just told me. What? We got our production people living too fucking nice, man. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers mm. get their own rooms at the Cosmopolitan <laughs> and yeah, shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to put them niggas on top of each other, man. Look at you. Look at you. Show us those shit. But, but yeah, but like I said, more, more importantly is that, you know, my thing is this. I hear a lot of people talking about Airbnb and they go out there and they're like, yeah, you could start an Airbnb, you know, uh, it's gonna take you fifteen thousand dollars, and I'm like, what average dude you know got fifteen thousand dollars to invest in Airbnb? Mm. But what they're not gonna tell you is, guess what? You can start a co-hosting business on Airbnb. I can literally go ahead and get twenty people's properties. I don't have to start with my money or my credit because they already have it, and I can be a co-host for them, and they're gonna pay me ten to twenty percent of all their earnings, and I could do that right from my phone, right from my home, making money on Airbnb, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month. And literally not even own the one. All right, so how do you do it though? When you co-host, what do you? What is the responsibilities of a co-host? So it's simple. So co-host, you're basically gonna do that day to day. You're gonna answer text messages. You're gonna make sure the cleaners are there when they need to. You're gonna restock on items. All right. So you're just doing the day to day work for Airbnb. The thing is, you can actually automate all of that. And I use my cleaners to do it. So what I do is I have my cleaners actually go to the store once every two months for me to restock on all the items that I need. Then you have apps like Guesty. You can set them up on Guesty to where every time you have a new booking, the cleaners will automatically get a message so they know when to go clean. So these are just responsibilities that I'm Dang. automating the process. I'm sitting home. I got 20 properties that I'm, that I'm co-hosting. Mm. I have, I'm doing everything from my phone. I'm not physically there. I have everything happening, but now I'm still collecting money. So for you, a per, if you're a person like, you know, I don't got the money. I don't got the credit. You still don't got no excuse because you can actually become a co-host. You can go right on cohostmarket.com. Become a co-host, get a bunch of people. You just need to know how to automate the process. Is, co- so you have to be there. is, is co-host only for Airbnb? Co-host market? Nah, there's some other options up there. But the first option you're going to see is Airbnb because that's the main thing. Damn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you, so you have, ain't doing nothing. So you can have 12, crazy. You can have 12 main Airbnbs that you got. Mm-hmm. And then you got 20 co-hosts. Mm-hmm. Let me hold something, nigga. Yeah, he got a lot of money. <laughs> 
Oh, you didn't see how he it's laughed at me and nigga ain't see I can hold with nothing. You <laughs> right there, <ass> nigga. <laughs> okay, baby. <laughs> Fuck, you gonna give me the pointer? <laughs> <laughs> nigga ain't see. Like nigga ain't see I got you. Nah, I'm gonna give you a Bruce. Told me too tight, man. I'm gonna give you a Bruce. Hold on, fuck them Bruce. You don't drink no beer. See you in Nashville. You're just gonna have beds in the living room. Oh, you gonna say? You staying in the hotel. So, man, give him that number again, Lowe. Listen, so man, what y'all need in. to do is text MDWG to 917-813-0072. 917-813-0072. Listen, get with JD right now. He's going to give you the employee exit plan membership program, which for free, he's going to give you the Airbnb money hacks course, the Airbnb script, the furnishing must have a list. And Metro 2 ebook, when he's going to give you the game on how to get the credit and all that stuff right. But listen, man, I'm telling you right now, it's going down. Now, J.D., before we get out of there, anything you want to say to the people? Yeah, man, just go ahead and start. Honestly, most people make excuses for reasons why they don't start things. And all you got to do is actually start because there's ways to do things even without having to not be in the best position financially, not being in the best position with credit. You just got to get yourself around the right people and the right information. So right here... You know, what I love about situations like this, they get around the right information. It's simple stuff that you can do. You get started, and then eventually you go ahead and elevate and start doing the other stuff, stuff like purchasing properties. But simple way to get started, man, no money, no credit, a little bit of information, change everything. And that's the reason why we do these million dollars worth of game business spotlights, because we want to give somebody an opportunity at home who don't got none of the things that he just said. We want to give you an opportunity to make some money. So that's why we be finding these good brothers who be able to give out this information and hopefully it could put some, you know, some sunshine into another motherfucker's life. But um, that was another episode of Me and Osworth for Game Business Spotlight. And I um, mean, we appreciate you, man. Make sure y'all tap in. Give them that number one more time. That number is text MDWG to 917-813-0072. 917-813-0072. And he's going to bless you with the Airbnb Money Hack Course, the Airbnb Script, Furniture Must Have List, and Metro 2 Ebook. This is another episode of Million Dollars. And you giving out a bunch of shit for free. Yeah, that's all you think I just said. This is another episode. We ain't giving out no money. Yes. <laughs> the free gonna get you the money though. Nothing, nothing. I'm just getting, I'm putting them, I'd rather put you in position. Real talk, I like that. He gave you the info. Yes, sir. And it's just like that. Right! You know, because a lot of people would try to downplay anything that anybody got going on on social media a lot of time. You'll yeah. build your stuff up, put work in, yeah. and people are like, oh, you're just a little IG page. You're taking it too deep. Tell the people how much time and energy it takes to make one two-minute or one-minute video. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you get my, my she had to look at the, the, the people <laughs> on the back they like production they look my, like you better not fucking lie <laughs> it my, take hours look right my friends are here like my girl Tisha who's my makeup artist slash my friend you know one of the, some of the skits y'all see she's recorded my rapping videos that went viral we did that like five ten six times you know like I said you get it she like no I think you should do it more time or like is it funny like but yeah. it's like I have so much jokes in me that it don't matter what I say. Yeah. It's just something different or it's maybe the same thing. Um, my videographer slash career director, Terrence, you know, he's here as well. You met him in New Orleans. Yeah. Even when we got to do our pictures, even when we got to do videos, that last skit I just posted with the afro with a yellow suit, he did that. And we did that like four or five times. It was cold as hell outside. I was like, do it again. Do it again. Do you know what's so crazy? Do do we do never do. I do a motherfucking video one time. Let me tell you, nigga, son. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers ain't shit. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then some, and let me tell you, it's always the first video that goes dumb. That's it. That's the, the first one. take. Give me the one. You dragging it on four or five times. Yeah. Wallow you know? dude, he only do one video. Get up, wake up. What you doing? Why you still sleep? Nigga, you sleep. Yeah. He speak the motherfuckers in his video. Hey, what's up, dog? <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, get up. Yeah. 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 You know, but uh, for some of us, we're like, hey, you know, uh, the first take was the best take. You just dragging it now. You know, just, and sometimes too, like you said, with our confidence. I wear confidence, it, but yeah. sometimes with our skits, we like, Okay, I want to make sure, you know, but sometimes it's, it's, it's okay to second guess yourself, but sometimes it's like, just post it. And that's why I told Charlemagne when I was on a breakfast club a year, two years ago, I said, look, whatever time ago it was, I said, look, all we got to do now is just post the content. I spoke to B. Simone there, I said, bro, go back to what felt good. Yeah. Just post the damn thing and call it a day. Girl, we, we're doing so much. We have, I have so much stuff coming out in 2024. <laughs> 
I recorded so much stuff in 2023 that's coming out in this year that the focus is to make sure that is where it's at. Heighten that. Do your skits. Like DC Young Fly. DC on the road. He gonna give you 85. He He gonna do this. But then he gonna come out and talk his shit on his this phone. Do what you have to do. Make sure you still connect with your fans on this social media because a 15-year-old, 14-year-old can't come to my shows. So it's like, Mm -hmm. make sure you still have a family here, but work on the things that's going to make sure you have longevity. That's the word I use all the time because I'm not just lax with a car and a house. We want more. We want this. We want that. And I'm happy that I have four, you know, so I could make sure I'm like, okay, this is what I have. This is what I have going on because of what I do makes me to have these things. So it's like, I'm not, I can't focus on like, did it hit? Bitch, drop that yeah. and let's go. Right. Now, <laughs> as a woman, did anybody ever come at you out of pocket in this fucking industry? You like the out of pocket shit and inappropriate, trying to finesse you, thinking that's For you know, sure. Like that's the way he listen, you wanna get the you wanna go on the other side? You wanna be on the wall? You ready? Come on. Well, not man. even on that type of time, just just again being pretty in the space and people just trying you, you know, and you know what it is. It ain't you don't even have to have those conversations, you know the body language. You know the vibes, you know the text message. It's like, okay, you know, now I know how to just keep it a professional. That's what I do all the time. And that's what they love. So when I see them, it's always a handshake and a hug. And they like, what a room we go to? Yeah, they yeah. And, and what's so crazy is a lot, a lot of women in the industry probably got to do that. Probably got to yeah, just be like, you know what, let me just keep it professional with you because I can't really tell you get the fuck out of here because yeah. I might fuck up an opportunity because yeah. you actually is the president of this motherfucker. So, yeah. uh, thank you for the compliment. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, That's crazy. Like, like I said in the beginning, I have great relationships in this industry. Damn. I have nothing bad to say um, and I pray that no one has anything to say about me maybe because I take five, ten more minutes than everybody else to just do a little liner. Other than that, I'm on. I'm rocking and rolling when the show, when they say, let's go to set, we on set. Like, I try to make sure that um, I keep those relationships and I keep a clean face in this space because at the end of the day, like, if someone take you out your character, they have power over you. Yeah, I ain't got that on me. Let's mm-hmm. rock out. Let's work. It means- and I had to come to this place. It wasn't that easy in the beginning. I had to come here. I was like, what you, you, be, what you, you what's got going on? Look, like, uh, 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 what's going on? Like, I had to know that. I had to, I had to learn that space. It took a few check-ins for you to, to get to <laughs> this space, huh? It took a, a, it took a few moments to be like COVID. I think was the woke everything up. Like everyone's in the same place. You're remain humble. You know, you're good. And I do that. I'm, I'm, I've been that girl before COVID, before I came in the industry. I've been a humble being. My heart speaks. But it's more of like, you want to retaliate. You want to be like, what are you talking about? Fucking yeah. But it's more of like, okay. But I am that girl, though. Everybody knows me. I am that girl to say, that ain't right. That's not what's going to happen. It is what it is. Let's go. Like, I'm, I'm that person. Because I want people to know that um, I hold the authority here. You know, I'm, I'm me. And uh, I'm, I'm going to walk like that. I'm going to walk as such. But I'm going to respect, you know, who has given me the offer and the deal and the opportunity. But, of course, you have to know your value and your worth and your self-worth. And you have to move like that so they can respect you. And like I said, I have a clean face. I have no issues with anybody because I had to learn to get here. No, you're in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You said what? Are you in a relationship? You said what? Are you in a <laughs> relationship? You said what? Oh, <laughs> how do you? You know what? For him asking that, for him asking that, you so big, you so public. How do you protect it? How do you? How do you protect? How do you protect yeah, what's, yeah. what's important to you and guard your like keep private life outside of everybody's in your business because you out there. How do you protect what's, what's I'm important? I'm so private. No one would ever know. I, you know, no one would. Oh yeah, somebody mm, baking them biscuits. Yeah. I just see the way she looked at nobody would never know. She looked at him when she said it though. You know. Mm. No, you know, no one would ever know. Seriously. No, I, I just literally I just keep my life private. Like I've been in relationships, you know, I've uh and not even relationships like that, but it's more of like, you know, I had a relationship years ago and it's never gonna be a post situation. I always keep those those vibes private. But So he don't yeah. ever feel no type of way. He never said, like, you don't, oh, no. we go on vacation, you don't never, No. he can't throw you up. I'm going to represent my woman. I'm going to no. put my woman up. No. Mm-mm. See, that's really a problem. Can no woman tell me that? I don't do that. I think for Can, real. Could no woman tell me that? If I'm in a relationship with you and we take a trip to the Bahamas and I want to post my woman up, I'm posting my woman up. 
You're going up. What you mean? Come here, baby. Yeah. What you mean? That's what I'm talking about. I can't push you up because yeah. of social well, media. But, but we don't get into all that, though. That's the thing. We don't get into the social media vibes. It's more of like, that's we're, we're, in, we're in that moment. We're present. But well, okay, we're when present. your birthday come around, he wants to say happy birthday to you. You can't just do my happy birthday to my baby. Oh, yeah, you can do that. The one and, and only, if she be holding me down. But yeah. we don't got to drag it. it. Could he post it? Yeah. All right, okay. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so he like can't that moment, not like dragging it. We on vacation. You're like, yo, what up? I got baby right No, here. no, we don't do it like <laughs> that. That's a nigga that's just <laughs> happy because he with pretty V. Right, like, we're not doing no, that. No, we ain't doing that, but it could be like, it but could I'm be something. You, Look at my baby over there in the pool. That's what I'm talking. I can't wait to get upstairs. Blue bubbles in her butt with a slurpy straw. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? But you know, I love when the I love when the phones are down. It's just me and you know my significant other, and we're present. You know, I had a birthday this past birthday, and I was present. You know, with my peoples. You know. So, so she just told us she got peoples without she telling us. No, she fucked up. She my fucked up. I just like the phone was down. She like I like my, my phone down when he laying me yeah. down and spraying me yeah, down. You know, it's my I peoples, so. you know. My peoples, my peoples. You know, uh, my my friend is here. She knows, like you know, I, I love I love to have my friends around me. And again, I do have a, a space where I am very private, and I keep it that way because people prey on your blessings. Is you it know? hard to keep it private? Um, it's not hard. It's up to the person, whoever you deal with. Mm -hmm. For them, they make it hard. It's like you gotta get posted. No, but what I'm saying is, how private do you keep it? Do you keep it private to like, I just don't post them, but we might go places together. So oh yeah, he so, might walk in while and out with me and wait for me or something. Yeah, okay. it's, it's one of so those. So that's moments. not that private. Then. Yeah, it's, it's not like that. People it's, know, but we just don't put it out there. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, people probably put two and two together. Like, oh, okay, but it's never given on social media. Yeah, nigga, like, yeah, you know, it's it's it's. You know, little Ricky from Bankhead did tan <laughs> pretty V ass up. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's, this is the second day he been on Wild and Out. Yeah, he ain't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told myself, I told myself in this season, in this blood clot season, that I'm, that I'm going to open up my heart to receive love, you know, to receive the genuine, authentic love. Now, why Not, did you have to say that in your Jamaican accent? Because, you, you know, when you're ready, you're ready for the love. You're ready. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you know, like, you know, right now, I'm right now to answer your question, I'm vibing, but I do have a peace. And I'm, I called him, I call him peace. All right, now, let me ask you a I question. I call him though. peace. And in, in, in the pursuit of that, <laughs> being out here. I call him peace. Being a, being a peace, popular well, a woman. Just, would a woman just refer to you as a peace? You doing some shit in that bedroom. I got. Yeah. I just got a piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, peace. This it's, nigga here. You, you, it's peace. It's a. It's a. It's a situation where people don't understand. Like, Gilly, you could be my piece. I mean, you have a wife, but I'm just saying, Wally could be my piece. You know, because people don't understand you. You when you go through these relationships and you go through these, fun, all you all you want is just peace. Yes. And when you have that person that brings that, oh okay, you he's wanna, your piece. Okay, you want to vibe out. Oh, you want to just let that person be there. Shut up, Giddy. <laughs> yeah. You know you want to just you want to just let that person be there. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I love what God is doing in this season with me. I love the people that He's you know um, putting in my life, and I love that it's you know the magnetic energy that's going on, and that's what it is. Now, with all that being said. <laughs> Has has it ever been a moment with your popularity and you really doing things in life you having and you winning <coughs> that you you had to be you know because women these days it seems like y'all got to be more leery and more on point because people is trying to get with y'all for clout yeah so did you ever had to like put your guard up or went through situations like that because you winning you having things and all these clout demons be coming from everywhere mm. I mean that's why it takes me a long time to commit to somebody. But you got to you know, see, make sure they ain't I a demon. I have to. Um, Cloud demon. It takes me a while to be like, you know, okay, now with my spirit of discernment, what's that discernment kicking in? Mm -hmm. What is that saying? You know, so it takes me a while to say yes to people because I just want to make sure what's their intentions. Like I said, I'm vibing. But at the end of the day, it takes me a while to let anybody in my space. I'm not all over the industry. No one could ever tell tell y'all that Vino was Ryan there. In the one hotel and Y and W doing no, because it takes me a while to have somebody in my space in that in that moment. So but what I'm saying is, we yeah, all know one thing about a woman. It could take up time and all that, and you know, I, I 
when she meet that one nigga she like, it don't take that much time. She like that nigga. Yeah. I want to see that nigga today, tomorrow, she Friday, about that nigga. and Saturday. It don't really take that much time when you meet that nigga. Him. When you like, you wake up, and the first thing soon as you wake up, you want to call that nigga. Mm-hmm. When you on your way to see him, you got them little butterflies in your stomach, and you like, I'm a grown ass woman. I ain't supposed to have no goddamn butterflies in my stomach at this mm-hmm. age, but you still got them. Mm-hmm. It don't really take that long to open up when it's that nigga. Yeah, but it, it also takes a, a moment to, you know, um, take a second too and know like what this feeling is. It could be all of that. And sometimes too, we could fall in love with the wrong person too. You have all that butterflies and that could be the, a wrong person to knock you off of what you got going on too. Fuck sometimes you, you overthink know? it and lose the wrong person though. You better come on. Sometimes you go, but is he really for me? In the tr- oh, Lord. <laughs> see, she really act. Sometimes you she sometimes react. you go overthink. See, now she really cry. I'm sorry, my my damn. <laughs> no, seriously, but you're right. It doesn't take a while to do that, but you also too. I'll be I'll be in situations where I've de- dealt with people six seven years ago, and then they come back in this space of my life. I'm no longer little Vina to you. I am not in that space. I'm now a grown woman that have responsibilities and the world knows me as Pretty V. So in that space, this young lady has this, this, this going on. So I want to make sure that when you come back around in that space, you're there to love me, not because of what's happening right now. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I've been blessed to have none of those moments. Oh, nigga, I'll tell you, man, stop fucking playing me, man. See, when you get gangster with them, that's when they love that shit. I just got to make sure, man, fuck, stop playing me, man. I knew you when you was motherfucking Lil V, motherfucking <laughs> running around here, motherfucker. <laughs> what, what high school you went to? Um, Irmo. When you was at Irmo High School, stop fucking playing trouble if I really love you, man. Stop. Man, come here, man, stop fucking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, ever, was it ever a time? Was it ever a time? Because a lot of times people be it's having crazy. things going on, especially women out here. They be having things going on with their business, their life, whatever. And a motherfucker come and mess their whole energy up and throw them off paper. Was it ever oh, a time sure. where, where your stuff was ever that ever at jeopardy? Because you was just like you wasn't. You was falling off, or you was like unsure because you was you know somebody was in your life. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, and I'm happy that's gone. Damn. You mm-hmm. ever dealt with a homeless sexual? No. A you know nigga, what that, a is? nigga that was homeless? Uh, no. I've but, never dated. But he was, he was staying with you for a no, couple of No, there's different type of ways of being homeless. He might be living with his mom or some shit. No, I've but, never. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I've. I've <laughs> oh, see, I've, see, no, see. No, no. You deal with one. I've dealt with one that's lived with his mom before, you know, and I was like 23, so what? That's all women dealt with a homeless no. sexual before. Hey, but you had your own spot. You was, yes. And he was staying over your spot, wasn't he? Because women. No, because I lived in Charlotte. Oh shit! But See, still- I, I, was saying, I lived in Miami, went to school in Miami, then then ended my high school in South Carolina. So when I left, I went straight to North Carolina in Raleigh, and then we were doing this long distance thing. So I was <sighs> staying with my sister, mm-hmm. and he was with his mama. Mm. But I didn't care because I liked him, and I was like, "Let's." What we See, doing? so he was a baseball. No, no, listen, listen. See, he's different. Most most younger women. They all go through one homeless yeah, sexual they go through that because spot. before they realize what life is really about, they don't know what life is. So they like niggas, but he cute. We can have a cute, but he got good hair. Oh my god, they yeah. don't really know what life is about. So mm. he could not have nothing going the fuck on. And <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, women Did he have a job? from the time they eighteen he years old, they graduate, they got a job, they get their credit mm-hmm. right, they go get a little Honda Sonata or something, they go get a little <laughs> full kid, they little first Camera. car, they 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 get a little apartment, you yeah. know. They, he ain't got shit going on, but she cute. And she loves it. And you know what's so crazy? I was talking to my home I say social media has made it to the point where you have to date bosses. You know? Why? Break that down. Um, because they look at what you have going on. I'm pretty V. I'm gonna just put me in this space, right? You being pretty V. You're like, you're that girl. Like everyone loves you. Like you're funny, you're beautiful, you have this going on, you have that going on. You got merchandise and city trends, you're this, you're all over the place, you're but you have to have someone someone to equal up to that. So I'm going to put his, I ain't going to say his name, but I'm going to put, you need to be with Michael B. Jordan. 
because that's good. You know, it makes sense for you to be with Michael B. Jordan because you're lit. You're supposed to have somebody with that. And sometimes I think about it, I'm just like, social media has made it so weird for relationships. Sometimes that's why I keep myself private because it makes it so hard for people to be like, oh, okay, so what your nigga do? Like, what your man do? Cause How much like, money he making? What he drive? What he drive? Because he better have like, like, yeah, like you, you, like, you can't be. I seen, I seen, I like, seen some women fuck up on Wallow. Mm. Fucked all the way up. When nigga came first came home from jail, you could tell they liked him. You could tell they wanted him. You could tell they wanted to be with him. But you know what the problem was? How I'm going to take this nigga home to my mama? And my mama say, what he do? He just came home from doing 20 years, mama. <laughs> this nigga running down the street doing videos. This nigga, he, what he do? He just laid on the ground with some ketchup on his head, mama, and told the kids, don't wait till it's too late, mama. But mama, I love him. <laughs> Them same motherfuckers right now, guess what they doing? What they, they wish doing? they could screw their own leg off and kick they self in the ass. Mm. Yeah, it was a couple. Yeah. They thought it was a game. They so, thought it was a game. Yeah, they so didn't they, see the vision. Yeah. They didn't go with what their heart told them to go with. Ooh. They overthink the they shit. They didn't go through the process because you had that promise. Absolutely. Father. That promise had that promise. Nigga kicked had in. a spark in his eye. Whew. You know? You know, they ain't they ain't want to go through the process with them. Now they want to double back. You know what he tell him? He should probably shouldn't tell him that, but you know what he tell him? What he tell him? Smell Lamborghini smoke, bitch. Arf! No, I don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell him that. Smell Maybach smoke, biatch. Arf! I don't tell you him. You know? Yeah, and that's Smell what 63 I'm... smoke. I keep going. They got a shitload of I don't cars. Tell him that. About a... I'll just be chilling, you know? You know, um, but that's how I feel. You know, social media have make makes it those yeah. moments, and for sure, you know, you gotta have someone. This is the rundown. You have to be spiritually inclined. You have to really, you know, your mental has to be on a one. For sure, you have to have some great finances. Come on, now you have to be. We're, we're praying on financial freedom. You know, you gotta have those ones. But I'm not in the space to be like, yo, you gotta have a nigga who own the heat. You gotta date the nigga that own the Broncos or whatever or whatever it is. Whatever makes you happy. And of course, you know, for me, it's like, I want I, I want a boss, but I don't want the boss that the world looks at it and grooms it to be. You could be a boss in your own way. You know, I'm a boss, you know, and some people that may want to, that pull me, be me a, a billionaire guy or a millionaire, be like, well, this person, you know, is doing whatever, but it's different for guys. You guys could groom somebody, give them a booty, give them a teeth, give them some money in their pocket, they straight. I think for a man... You, us for females, we want the man to come correct too. We want to, we want them to come with something, you know. And for me, I, my the boss that I want, I don't want what the world wants, you know. I want what God ordains me to have because He knows what my 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 what my career, my career possesses and what my promise is. So if you can't, when you come into my life, you have to make sure that you are whole in your own way. You know, you got to make sure that you believe in God. You got to make sure that you are doing what you need to do because I'm not. That, that's a big thing for me. I, I can't have, when I'm in whatever nervous or whatever it is, you have to lay hands and cover me. You can't do that. You have to go home. All right. mm. And the bottom line is a, is a, is a man or a woman can make you or deflate you. Mm. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Either they going to help you elevate or they going to fuck you over. Mm -hmm. Come on. There's only, there's only two ways this going to go in a relationship. Mm -hmm. If a nigga come around, because my, my, my this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. If a nigga fuck with you, and he financially cool, he ain't gonna never see you fucked up like that. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna never happen. He gonna figure something out. Let's figure some ways out that you can make some money. You wanna open up something, what you want, what's your ambition, what you wanna do? Let's figure this shit out. Mm -hmm. He gonna even put you in position to get some money. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah. either a nigga, and that's with a woman. Either she gonna make you, either she gonna support your dreams, she gonna roll with you. We mm -hmm. just had a kid in here that was 18 years old. Wallow found a nigga on Instagram, call him up, yo, young and I like your clothes. He pull up, who with him? His 18 year old girlfriend right there with him. So you better keep holding the camera. I said, you better keep her nephew. She got the yeah. camera, she filming. She, mm -hmm. she believe in this nigga's dreams. Yeah. He can automatically go further because he got a cheerleader. When you got a motherfucking cheerleader on your side, that's like, you can do it, you can do it. That yeah. energy alone, oh, that shit push you forward. Mm. The, what, the, the niggas you got to get away from you is the niggas, I don't know if that's going to work. 
Well, bitch, we never tried it, so neither do I. Let's <laughs> give it a shot. Mm -hmm. You yeah, get them right. niggas away from you fast. All them niggas that take deep breaths every time you come up with an idea. <sighs> you know what, bitch? Take your deep breaths outside. <laughs> you need some air, nigga. You need a little stuffy in here. Take your deep breaths outside. Because at the bottom line is, when I came up with a million dollars worth of game, if I don't want the one of my homies, come on, just be for real, who ain't as fly as me, who ain't as thorough as me, who, who, so how could I ever expect them to see my vision coming through my motherfucking eyes when you ain't as thorough as me, nigga? Yeah. That ain't gonna never happen. Yeah. So if I would've went to them and said, yo, I'm thinking about doing a million dollars worth of game where I give game up and then at the end I scream, right? You think them niggas would've been like, yeah, that's a good idea. They'd have been like, I don't know, man. I gotta see this shit. I don't really understand what you saying. That could've deterred me from doing what I was come needing on, to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You, just gotta, you ain't going for that. It wouldn't stop you. No, man. but what I'm saying, that's if I was a weak-minded nigga. You I'm not speaking on me. I'm just speaking on people in general. But me being who I am, I understand you niggas ain't half as fly as me. You niggas ain't never been fly as me. Yeah. You, you motherfucking baby mom like a stuffed vacuum bag, nigga. Why am I listening to you, man? <laughs> I ain't listening to you, nigga. Fuck wrong. I'm, I'm tripping even asking you, nigga. I just got to do me. <laughs> then when I do it, let me give you a man eyes worth of game, nigga. Don't chase bitches and chase money, because when you got money, bitches chase you. Right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I understand now. <laughs> that was hot. Yeah. See, so you can't, when you come up with something, that's yours. Yeah. You own that shit. You put mm -hmm. the work in to make it happen. Come on. Don't be listening to no raggedy nope. ass niggas on the side. I'm not listening to no nigga that can't make a three pointer to tell me how to fucking shoot. That ain't gonna happen. Come on. So when you come up with your shit, just do it. She said it earlier. I was talking to B some more. I said, B, just put it out. Mm -hmm. Getting your energy and just put it out. That's what it's about, man. Yeah. Just putting it out and working. Now, putting it out. Now, where is the end game for you? Where is that level for you? What do that look like? That level, what, what did that look like for Pretty V? Getting to the next level and be like, bang! When it's all said and done, this is who they're going to know me by. This is what I've done. This is what I accomplished. This is what I left. This is me. I mean, I think it's so early to say because I'm not done. Even when I get to a space where I feel like I did it, mm -hmm. I'm not done. Um, even if I have 10 million, 100 million, 200 million, I'm not done. Um, I have a purpose and... Um, um, I do a lot of speaking to young girls. You know, I have an organization called The Pretty Victory. You know, I have a, a platform, The Pretty Beast Production, where, again, I, I put on my sketch comedy. I do have different things I want to do with my businesses and all that great stuff. But I'm not done even when I get there. I think God has some more work for me to done. That's like telling Missy Elliott she's done and she just got a Rock and Roll mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. You know, she could have been stopped on different awards. You know, she just keep going. There's something out there. Even even if I say I'm gonna get a star, I'm like, oh, I'm good, I made it. No, after the star, what's next? Even when if I get this, I, I want mm -hmm. all of it. There's no stopping. A delay is never denial for me. You gonna get delayed, but you're never denied. You know, we all these things that I have to do, I have to go through a process before my promise. This is my promise, but there's another thing that God has, and I'm gonna have to go through something again to get there. 2024, we were like, oh my God, Happy New Year! It's gonna be lit. Um, well, when the ball dropped. I had a headache because I'm like, I got to make sure these things are, uh, I've got to make sure my agents know. I got to make sure I'm mm -hmm. here. I got to make sure I'm there. It wasn't like, let's celebrate. I was home watching church when the ball dropped. My period was on. Excuse me, TMI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Clifford, the big red dog, came mm -hmm. to visit me. So, <laughs> so, so, so TMI, sorry. But uh, those moments was I was, I was, I was in the bed home just making sure that um, God got that, you know, for me. God got 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 to go back and give Him that time, because I know 2024 I will be moving and grooving and working and twerking. So, right. um, I'm I don't know what that top is is gonna be there, but we gonna have to keep going, soaring. Well, let me tell you, yeah. everybody that celebrated New Year's brought the New Year's in top. It's gonna be lit. It's only gonna be lit if you make it lit, nigga. You, and that's a fact. <laughs> It's only going to be lit if you and put that work in. And that's a fact. You know what I mean? You, you could be at all the parties with your eyes on, your rolly, and oh, all of that. Happy New Year. <laughs> if you was a bum ass nigga and you ain't going to do nothing about it in 2024, you're going to be a bum ass nigga still, man. You ain't yep. all that fake ass New Year's. Right? This year going to be the year. You were saying that for the last 30 years. You've been yeah. a bum ass nigga for 29 years, mm -hmm. man. You, you, you ain't changing nothing, man. You got to make it lit. Yeah. 
like she said, I was I was in the house when the, when New Year's came around because mm-hmm. I'm thinking about how I'm about to get this energy drinking fifty thousand more stores. Yeah, come on. How we about to elevate Gilly and Wallow's adventures? Mm-hmm. Right. How we about to elevate Gilly Fest? Hello. How we about to elevate and make Gilly sure y'all call me for the Gilly Fest, yes, please. Call me, call me. Make sure you the booty is twerking there. on stage yes, you, for Gilly Fest, please. Yes, you will be at the next what one. What are we talking? We getting it in order you know? right now. Hello. Yeah. Make sure this booty is <laughs> clack 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 hey. oh on the on the Gilly <laughs> Fest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was I, up there shaking his ass the last year. <laughs> <that is. laughs> so no, seriously, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for what what uh what God has in store. Um, come this new year. I mean, I I feel like I'm just getting started. You know, um, I'm elevating in uh, in a lot of areas and I'm massaging the the comedy tool and you know showing up and I, I I'm going back to what felt good. You know, because mm-hmm. when work comes in, you be, you forget what felt good because you mm-hmm. feel like you have to do these things and you got. No, we're gonna just just do what feels good. I'm I'm an all purpose entertain. You got to go back to what feels good. But I want to say something to you, Gilly. Um, I uh, it was on my spirit to uh, tell you that, uh, and and I know I text you and reached out uh, about your son. Thank you. You know, and I just want to um, just encourage you to just you know keep going, even when that mental and mind of yours get weary, um, you know, or confused. Just know that God already grants you favor, and He already gave you strength to keep going. He's doing it, you know. So just keep going, and I, and I know that God's gonna heal those places, and you won't have residue to lean on because there will be no one when you trust God. Right. It'd be none of that once you trust God. So just want to show you my love and and, and and my care for that because I know that was something big, you know, yeah. not just for the world, but for you. Because in your secret place, you have to deal with it. You don't have, everything is not for Instagram, but in right. your secret place with your family, you have to deal with that. And my heart and my love goes out to you and your family. And I and I know that God has already granted you favor. And so just continue to just keep going. I appreciate that, yeah. Faye. For sure. Real talk because, yeah. uh, you know, it's all good in a in the light. Mm-hmm. But you know, when you're home by yourself, mm-hmm. and you got to bring New Year's in without your son for the first New Year's, you get rough, you get a little dark. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Rest in peace to Cheese. Miss Rest in peace, Cheddar. Yeah. I talk about that kid, it get rough. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> And I love you so much. You know, I appreciate uh, you, we are all inspired by you too. You know, we are all um, grateful that you guys are a part of the culture and you're doing authentically. You're doing it in a raw form. You're doing it uncut. We love that. Um, look at this. It's a table and three mics. Yeah, you don't have a Rolex on. In the hotel. A conference. You don't have a Rolex on. You don't nah. have to. You're just showing up as the rawness that you can be. And that's why God is going to continue to elevate you guys. Real and I talk. just can't wait to be and a witness for all of that. And I tell this nigga all the time, right? I say, mm-hmm. uh, really, me and, me and Wallow got the hardest job. Mm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, not, and then let's be for real. You know, I ain't talking shit, but we the top of the food chain. Come on, talk it. <laughs> like, ain't too many niggas make more money than us. That's just the, the facts of this shit. And we the only niggas that don't talk about negative shit. Think about that. We really behind the eight ball. Think about the niggas that's winning in media that don't talk about negative shit. That they ain't going to call you in here and ask you about the nigga that shot you. The nigga you shot. The nigga you beefing with. Your baby mama drama. The, we don't do none of that. We give our positive game. And we winning the most. Come on, man. Let's be for real, man. We already know we in God's favor. Mm-hmm. Because... In order to win in this space, you got to talk about negative shit. We don't even talk about negative shit. We don't even talk about current events. Because mm-hmm. when we get an artist on here, we want to know what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. We don't want to know what's going on with what happened. Like, no, we want to know what's going on with you, how you grew up, mm-hmm. how you get to be who you are, how you, with the work that you put in to get here. Because we want you to inspire another young girl somewhere that's like, Okay, that's what I got to do to be Pretty V. I look up to Pretty V. I want to be like her. That's what I got to do. So for us to be in a space we in and we don't even talk about negative shit, niggas can't fuck with us, man. <laughs> and I love that. And um, 
even for somebody out there, a young, uh, someone that's, you know, trying to get into the door of the comedic space or social media or being an entertainer, I always say this, it's not, um, it's not easy. Um, it is not a uh, walk in the park just because no. you go viral don't mean you could be consistent on your phone. And it's just a phone. People just think like, oh, no, I could do this all, all day. No, it's, it's a phone, but you're on an app that some days your page and your engagement would not be a million. <laughs> it would not be looked at or go on the shade room or the blogs or whatever. Right. You may not get that engagement. You may not get that hype. But the key to this thing is to keep going, to be consistent, to be you, you know, be prayerful, be mindful of the energy that's around you. Be, be I always say this, put your feet on the ground and just go, but you got to be you and you got to stay consistent. It's so much things that we have done. Like I said, I've been doing it for 20, from 2016. It is now 2024. I've got brand deals. I've done shows. I'm in movies. I'm in TV shows. I'm in all these different things. But that I'm still not satisfied. People will stop on Wild and Out and say, I made it. All right. But um, but don't put out no box. Yeah. There ain't no box big enough to fit it. Exactly. Fuck it. But we also have to know too. There's a Viacom. There's a Nick Cannon. They choose when it airs. They choose when we have another episode. We don't. Right. So you have to keep going. So you, you got to keep going. You know. So and you got to create something for you. You yes, create that. You know what we created is for us. Yep. We own everything. Come mm -hmm. on. So yeah. We, and I own my shit. Right. You know? So. so you got to keep going. I own everything that I post. I don't do anything off anything. If I mimic somebody, cool. But the content that I put out is what I own. The things that I do is what I own. My Anything that's, that say pretty V name, I own it. You and that's know? what it's about, ownership. Yeah. yeah. You can't truly win if you ain't got no ownership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for, since we started Million Dollars Worth of Game, it came out on our platform. Mm. It never came out on no other platform. Mm -mm. Our shit just come out on Million Dollars Worth of Game. That's it. Everything we do come out on million dollars worth of game. I got 3.5 million followers. He got 2.5 million followers. Our million dollars worth of game got a million followers. Our mm. TikTok got over a million followers. Our YouTube page got over 1.5 million followers. My backup page got 600,000 <laughs> followers. Our Twitter's got hundreds of thousands of followers. So when mm. we attack shit, we attack shit at once. Bam, 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 bam. So that sure. shit everywhere like broken glass, man. For sure. But it took years of building mm -hmm. this shit up. This ain't happened overnight. For sure. I was giving out million dollars worth of game for f five years before Wallow even came home. So figure out what you want to do and put the work in. I yeah. promise you, God going to open all the doors for you. Okay. Once you put enough work in. And you got to understand You're going to fall through the motherfucking doors. They're going to open up so fast. But And then you're going to have to fall forward. No. Okay, you can't keep saying what's back ain't nothing back there no more. Nothing. You gotta keep going. Nothing. Well, pretty V, man, we appreciate you pulling up on us. Yes. What you doing, man? Oh no, I was messing with that water. Oh fuck, what you doing that for? Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. I'm up in the snitching for a You look like he's you know, scratching his yes, feet and no, shit. I was, was lying in the water. Nigga scratching his, the, his puppies all under I the was table. I'm in the water with the table leak. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, we know what was well, going B, on over there. You know, we appreciate you for coming through. You got anything <laughs> coming up you want to shout out before you, before you get before Tell you get out? Tell about everything you got going organizations, your brands, websites. Where can they get what you at? I mean, for sure, all social media platforms, you already know Instagram. Um, Facebook, TikTok. I'm back on Snapchat, y'all. You know, Are you back to Snapchat. I'm back. It's a little snappy. Yeah, you know? People over there. <laughs> you know that. Hello. Yeah, so we like we back on that snappy. Um, what else is out here? What What else? You know, YouTube, Pretty V TV. You know, all my fun moments. You already know. And uh, we have so much stuff in store. I don't want to give. I'm not that girl to give away too much. But like I said, I have been working in 2023, and everything that I have been doing will be coming out this year. And we're gonna work in between all the commotion. And I love mm. it. Great commotion, though. You know. Mm. And yeah. God is big good. Big year for. Yes, big year. God is big good. I year. can't complain. 2024. Yes. Pretty V. Yeah. Million dollars worth of game. game. We love you, baby. Love I you. love you guys, too. Are you guys still recording? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love you guys, too, so much. Walo, Gelly, and Robita Sobarato. Cortito y rabo. Menos que esa choca. De aquí, cacalita. La choca tarita. Rabo, gatita. Rosado. Jajita. Arr.
<laughs> hey, only get buzzer. A poor five lure. What that mean? The I second don't thing. Fucking know. Poor reward. Poor five lure mean please. I think. Oh yeah! Right. Shout out to Nick. We got a show that is Shout coming. Uh, 2024 I can't talk about it But like I said We've been You know it's Shout out to Nick down. But I gotta do Nick Cause Nick is Yeah amazing Nick that Nick He is yeah. <laughs> yeah. He canceled Nick Nick bounced right back on him <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, right. Uh, Thank you guys so much I enjoyed thank this Thank you And we appreciate you for coming And I love that it wasn't messy no, we Never. don't do messy we don't do shit. shit I'm just saying I love that it wasn't messy that We don't do messy shit I love that it was clean I love that yeah, everything was I mean, You know only thing used to be messy was Wallo Cell at the end of Selly arguing over a candle like dinner one night on Valentine's <laughs> Day. But that's something. That's a whole different story. <laughs> and it's just like that. Right! <laughs>